Hello everyone. Um, thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, my topic for today's webinar is infrastructure transformation, looking at it from the standpoint of the CIO. I'm going to share some of my journey through infrastructure transformation and discuss the findings that my team and I have made as we've undertaken this transformation journey. Let me start by introducing myself. I am Chris Fielding, and I'm the CIO of SunGuard Availability Services. I've been in the IT business for more than 30 years, and I've been in IT leadership with SunGuard AS for over 10 years. I started as the UK head of, head of IT, then taking on a CIO role for Europe, before becoming the global CIO for SunGuard in January of this year, 2018. For those of you unfamiliar with SunGuard availability services, we're a billion dollar global business headquarters out of Wayne, Pennsylvania, USA. SunGuard availability services helps businesses transform their IT environment, ensuring they are resilient and recoverable. As a result, our customers can streamline and manage complexity, minimize risk, change. As you can imagine, I've been able to use the expertise within our company to help with this transformation journey. So let me run through what I'm going to talk to you about today. I'd like to start with some terminologies to get us all to the same baseline understanding. I'll then go on to talk about some definitions of infrastructure transformation and what that involves, before going on to share some of my own experience of the many forms of infrastructure transformation. As I've said, my discussion is done from the viewpoint of the CIO, so I'll be looking at changes infrastructure transformation can bring to the way the business works, as well as the fundamental shift to the way the IT team is structured and the contributions of IT within a business. The webinar has the option for you to ask questions. Please feel free to enter them as I have a whole section dedicated to answer any questions that you would like to pose um, at the end of the presentation. Uh, let me get started then. Um, and I'll start with a bit of a provocative statement. I have a cloud first strategy. As you can see from this Gartner slide, if you're not moving to a cloud first strategy, you're in the laggard section of the technology providers, a place a leader of a a technology leader in a business would never choose to be. However, this is a very easy statement to make, as many of you will understand. And as we go through this webinar together, I'd like to give you an understanding of the opportunities given to me in order to help my business and my IT organization move to a place where I can make and justify this very simple statement. So let me turn now to terminology. I'm using here Gartner's definition of toolkits. A foundation toolkit being the one that every user in your organization will recognize. These are the critical tools that we all need in the 21st century to be productive in our organization. Email, access to talk to others, whether that's via telephone, internet messenger, or email, prepared documents, being in a meeting, or collaborating with each other or our customers. All this great tech is provided by the IT organization, and there are differing levels of IT infrastructure that are required to support it. The second set of tools are provided to a subset of your users. These are the tools that are needed for specific lines of business, be that sales and marketing with their customer relationship management toolkit, CRM, finance, accounting systems, procurement systems, 
Again, there are large amounts of IT infrastructure required to provide these services to your business. I'm going to share my view of IT infrastructure transformation from the standpoint of supporting domain toolkit first, then foundational. For me, there's only a small degree of difference between the mechanics of change. However, that is not the whole story. For me, there are three possible approaches to changing the IT supporting your domain toolkits. The first is replatforming. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, lifting and shifting the entire infrastructure and moving it into a cloud platform. You're therefore continuing to need a deep knowledge of managing your application at the infrastructure level. And in addition, you need to bring new skills to the table to manage your non-cloud application in your new cloud environment. It's hard to look for the business justification here unless it's the end of life infrastructure giving you an option to change. The second is cloud innovation. Here I'm considering redeveloping all or parts of a non-cloud application to take advantage of cloud tool concepts, a well-known one being containers. The important differentiation is that you're handing over control of the base inf infrastructure layer to the cloud provider while you focus on managing new tools, or you may go further to the platform as a service and use the cloud provider's toolkit. The key is that you're giving up varying degrees of your infrastructure control to a third party. Again, the business justification is usually a result of significant business change to warrant further investment in the toolkit. So let's look at the final approach. This is a much more radical from both an IT and a business perspective because it requires both a business process change to move off your existing systems and move to a software as a service solution. And this time you are giving up all IT control of the infrastructure environment to the SaaS vendor. And your IT team are now managing a relationship with a SaaS support organization who are providing your service. I think you'll all agree these are very different skills. If we now look at the infrastructure supporting foundational toolkits, as I've said, this is a very similar situation in some ways and more radical in others. So there are many opportunities to move infrastructure supporting the, the, the IT environment into a cloud environment. The impact on the business may be minor. However, here again, the business justification will drive the change. The second change is much more radical. This is a move to a collaboration platform. This type of change affects the largest number of users. And for the CIO, therefore, holds a huge amount of risk. Again, this is a software as a service approach, and it's about moving the service that is provided by a third party and, and changes what is in the IT organization. Of course, you don't have to go big bang. You could start by moving email, then perhaps some amount of messaging, private or shared areas. Once you get to voice and video, things start to get much harder. All are going to change the way the traffic rides your enterprise network. So you're going to need to understand your network architecture and any potential changes required to support this new vision with all the cost implications that go with network changes. Finally, there's the question of who's going to educate my user base about this change and why we're doing it. It affects everyone in the company and needs a full communication plan. What am I trying to get across here is that in infrastructure transformation programs are mostly far reaching. These are business transformation programs, not just IT infrastructure changes.
Transformation programs require participation from the entire company. And for these types of high-risk changes, the exec team has to be brought in and understand the risks. However, for this type of information, infrastructure transformation program, it's critical to get buy-in from your own team, the IT team. This is as much a people, process, and skills change as it is about a technology change. You're going to need to answer questions from your team about what's in it for me. Why should they change from their comfortable known way of doing things to this unknown rocky path full of risk? They need to be sure that you have the business buy-in for this change because they are very well aware of how complex the change is going to be. Then you need to look at your IT organization. Can it cope with the amount of change that this type of transformation program brings? Will your methodology deliver in this new world? Can your IT team deliver their day-to-day -day work and deliver this change? Let's consider the toolkits you're recommending to your business. What skills are in your organization? Any? Whether or not there are some, it's likely you will have Every, you won't have everything you need. So have you some people who could cross-train to the new skills? What would it take to do that? You therefore have to work out what you're going to need to buy in and for how long. Clearly, as the owner of the IT budget, the CIO gets to work with the business users to help them understand how much IT change they can afford. Another important factor is how much change the business community can deal with at any one time. As the IT leader, you're often privy to the changes happening in the business, the success of which could be positively or negatively affected by changing the underlying toolkit. So IT transformation is a negotiation about cost, speed, and willingness to change. Clearly, IT transformation is a journey that will have many stages. The longer the time taken on the journey, the more likely you are going to have to change the journey. Now, shouldn't you be single-minded as the leader in IT, pushing through the IT strategy? Well, none of us work in a vacuum, and there could be significant change in the business strategy or the technology that you are hoping to use, or both, during the transformation timeline. The amount of time the journey takes is therefore heavily dependent on the business strategy as well as the IT budget plus the amount of simultaneous change the business can manage. As the IT leader, you have to be prepared to build your plans on shifting sands, which means you have to be flexible and able to re react to minimize risk as the business, technology, or attitude to change moves around you. So let me now share some of the journey I've taken with our business units, users as we've undergone a number of different types of IT infrastructure transformation programs. Let me start first with the simplest program that we undertook as a result of a business objective to simplify our ITDR. ITDR is an overhead to the business. So we're always looking for ways to simplify and spend less resources to achieve the requested recovery point and recovery time objectives that my business users desire. 
The infrastructure supporting some key domain tools that were part of the DR were approaching end of life. So we needed to decide on the path forward. We made the case for using the opportunity to start storage consolidation and virtualization into a private cloud. We saw some great improvements in recovery time, and the program had good success. So we were therefore able to open up new possibilities to move more systems into this private cloud infrastructure. As we migrated more into the private cloud, we saw a gradual change in the skills that we required in the IT team. We were less dependent on skills related to problem solving issues with physical hardware. The skills we started to value were logic-based, particularly scripting skills. So now let me walk you through our first foundational toolkit program. Our business leaders felt that our foundational toolkit was no longer meeting their needs. They decided that a move to a cloud-hosted solution was a risk they wanted to manage. As a result, we moved from a completely in-house provided Lotus Notes platform to the Google Collaboration platform. This was a radical change. Our IT organization giving up infrastructure control of our email, a business, a business critical service. We had critical skills associated with managing that infrastructure. By the end of the activity, they were no longer critical to us. We now needed a different set of skills to administer and understand the Google Collaboration Platform and work with the third-party vendor to manage the service and the relationship. Very different. The move, this move changed our business's attitude to risk. So our business users became more open to software as a service and cloud solutions. The door was open to lots of new possibilities. So our IT organization needed to change. We started to be focused on integration rather than application stack. Roles began to change across the whole IT organization. Let me give you some examples. We had already started to move away from physical infrastructure management and move more to managing VMs. Well, the pace of that change increased. The application team skills also started to change. My team are now highly skilled integration providers, where, and they tackle the knotty issue of data ownership, which means we bring in our enterprise architecture team, and they are heavily involved and play a vital role in this space. Have I given you a feeling of the speed of change yet? That in itself caused problems. We needed to change the way we worked to cope with this speed of change that the business needed from us. We moved from our tried, trusted, and heavily documented waterfall methodology to Agile. As the teams became more confident and we started to deliver faster, we decided to go to a new level and move to DevOps. These were disruptive changes to our IT organization that required a big investment in skills training. Fortunately for me, we had some people in the organization who'd been pushing to try this for some time. So they grabbed the opportunity I gave them and ran with it. The result is that we now have in place 
for all our teams, regardless of what they're supporting, a DevOps methodology. We use both Sprint as well as Kanban teams, depending on what we're de delivering. And my leadership team are heavily involved in the tools that support the process. And we manage our meetings using the tool. We actually use JIRA, if you, if you were interested to know. Now, let me share with you how much things can change once business owners understand tools. Our business made another radical decision to move from the Google collaboration platform to Microsoft. From both a business and IT perspective, this time the changes were about cross-training to a different platform, specifically for IT, not moving from physical infrastructure management to SaaS management, just from one platform to another. So I again began to move to the world where I thought everything is possible. So let me now talk a little bit about governance and compliance in our new cloud world. Now that we've opened the door to end users using cloud tools and software as a service. As I've said before, enterprise architecture becomes critical in this environment, as you need to ensure that all the systems have the same understanding of each microservice, down to the individual data items within it. Data ownership becomes an even more hotly debated topic, and many representations of the same data have to be managed through. There are many SaaS providers out there who will sell direct to the end users. So my IT team have had to take on a consultancy type approach. They have to work closely with business owners to understand what they need and help them with tool choices, helping them to understand which vendors will easily integrate with the enterprise architecture and explain the costs of the other options. Technology is a very double-edged sword. Because you're using cloud tools, users are exposed to fantastic, easy to use, free tools. So you need to help with guidelines of things that are not free to enterprises and have compliance implications for the business as a whole. It becomes everyone's responsibility to ensure tools are used appropriately and in compliance with the company's policies. So enterprise-wide training takes on even more importance. I don't need to tell you about great collaboration required between security, compliance, and the IT support team to make sure that the users are well protected in the, in, the, in the environment. So let me talk a little bit uh, about, as I've been sharing things as I go through the transformation journey, let me focus on some of the key findings to take away from this webinar. The first benefit I will think you'll get from IT transformation is a move from a keeping the lights on type IT organization to a value add. Whether that is giving users access to new collaboration tools or simpler, cheaper ways to manage IT infrastructure, all open up new budget opportunities. IT transformation also leads to big changes in the skills of the IT organization, skills that are very marketable. DevOps also means teams work in a different, 
more flexible way. The result is that you should have a happier team. As you are working more closely with your business and helping them find good, cost-effective technology solutions to problems, you should see happy business users. As you are bringing your enterprise architects into business conversations to help get cost-effective solutions, you should see your business understand the value of a good enterprise architecture and continue to invest. So I've painted a very positive picture here. What could possibly go wrong? Well, the fact that your IT team have great marketable skills means that you're at risk of losing them. So you have to work hard to keep your environment a great place for them to work so they choose to stay with you. Pushing much of the user traffic away from your data center and into the cloud means that you will need to review your network architecture to ensure that you are going to be able to cope with all this additional internet traffic. Cost management takes on a much greater significance, as now the most junior operators can provision VMs that could blow the budget very quickly. Infrastructure procurement processes need to be replaced with clear procedures for cloud infrastructure provisioning. There's a trade-off to be made between flexibility and cost. The more flexible you want to be, the bigger cost overruns you need to be prepared to risk. There are also agreements to be made with teams about what can be turned down and when, as the business begins to understand the cost of cloud IT, simple errors can have very expensive outcomes. Of course, I've alluded to the fact that you need to try and control the span of tools within your organization. And as you are working closely with your users, you can hopefully head off the islands of automation before they really get started. So, let me get to my conclusion. Would I recommend a cloud first strategy? Absolutely. There are very many potential benefits that your business and your IT organization can get from taking on such a vision. However, I would caution you to have, you have to work hard to achieve it, and it takes time, resilience, and patience to get there. So, let me um, open the webinar to any questions, as that completes the presentation part of my webinar. Uh, ooh, I have a question. <laughs> um, how long did it take for your move from Lotus Notes to Google? A very interesting question. The whole process took around 18 months. There were lots of issues that we had to resolve and lots of discussions, detailed planning, and migration activities. So it was quite a long process from start to finish. I suppose the follow-on question from that is, how long did it take to move from Google to Microsoft? That in itself is very interesting because that move was considerably faster. It took around nine months, but six months of that was a planning 
was in the planning and about three months was in the execution. So, did we work with any third parties to help with our journey? As I stated at the beginning, Sungard AS has in-house expertise on transformation. So I was able to draw heavily on that. However, we did bring in specialist expertise when we, want, when we were doing specific things. For example, the email platform migration. And typically, they were recommended to us by the vendors. <laughs> so I have another question. I work with government as a supplier. They are not easily convinced with working with the cloud. What is your recommendation? Um, I think more and more governments are starting to understand the benefits of working with the cloud. Um, certainly in the UK, the government have gone to a, um, a policy of uh, cloud cloud first. Um, it's really about giving people comfort um, that it's a secure place and that things happen well and the, um, that you are able to control that environment even though you're not controlling the underlying architecture. Um, another good question, what were the drivers to mobilize executive committee's attention on the cloud journey. Um, firstly, our, our first foray was about simplification of the infrastructure and potential ways to save money and resource. Um, however, as as new members of the leadership team came into the organization and looked at the tools that were being provided, there was pressure to change. So they started to come to the IT organization and want a different type of experience for the user community. So it was kind of a partly started off as being a cost and then started off to be in a, the way that the business wanted, the, the leadership wanted the business to change. Well, I don't have any more questions coming at me. So at that point, I will say thank you so much for all your attention. Um, and um, I look forward to your feedback.